What's going on world? It's your boy here, Wesley from AConnectionTV.com and AConnectionTV on YouTube. The one area in the online world where no matter what, you can adopt similar connections despite our differences. And before I get into season nine, episode nine, adaptation, the extended episode, because it was a long ass episode, I need y'all to do me a solid and I need y'all to follow this YouTube page. Subscribe, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications for future videos that will come up. And also, I need y'all to do me a solid and follow me on my Instagram, ACTVIG and A Connection TV. And one more thing before we get into this review, which by the way, this episode was really good. By the way, this episode was really good. I need you to subscribe to AConnectionTV.com, the new website that will be the hub for everything in diverse entertainment. We have scripted shows, short films, cartoons, feature films that will be coming on, and we're also looking for content creators to put their content on the website as well. So this has been in the making for a long time since I started A Connection TV, and you guys that are rocking with us so far, um, I really appreciate you and thank you so much. More exclusive content is coming this week and every week hereafter because we do uploads every week. So definitely check out AConnectionTV.com for more exclusive and prime grade A content. Now on to this particular review now. Miss Michonne, I love her. And I hope nothing ever happens to Gennady Guerrero, but you cannot hope and wish and pray for things like that in The Walking Dead because no matter who you care for, they may end up dead. That seems to be like how it works. Even if they are the front runner, they'll end up dead. But she gives us a brief overview of the particular events that have taken place thus far and right away when I see Rick Grimes when I see Andrew Leakin's face I'm like Robert Cuthman I hate you I'm just like okay throw it in our faces that none of the originals are here except for Carol Daryl and I guess Dur Danai but none of nobody is here Nobody here. And it's like now this episode, the, the series has gotten so thick with actors or characters that we barely get to see a Carol. We barely get to see like, well, it's all about Denai and um, Daryl. But anyways, before I say, I've already sidetracked. I've triple tracked. Let me get back on track. We start back at the cemetery where Jesus is laying lifeless on the ground. And I'm, I'm like, okay, so we're continuing where we left off from, you know, the last episode and they realized that these freaks are walking around wearing masks and perpetrating the fraud and being zombies and killing people and, you know, zombie got, you know, Jesus got his back stabbed in with a sword and all this extra crap. All I'm thinking is why are they still in the cemetery? Why aren't they running? Why aren't they getting away? With? I could not understand if what was going on if but it didn't make sense. And then we, we're, we see this footage for like five minutes straight and they're just killing one, killing here, killing one. They see another one run after them and they kill it. And then that's when Michelle was like, okay, we gotta run. And I'm like, you think? Then all of a sudden they start to, to quietly run out the thing. And I'm like, why don't y'all just run? And then um, somebody tries to attack Michonne behind, from behind and then Unico goes and pulls the bow and kills them. So I'm like, okay, all right. They get out, they get out the gate, they close the gate, and then of course you see one of the hands from one of the zombies in the front turns the gate to get open. And I'm like, oh man, like this is some freaky, freaknik shit, like what is going on? So in the last episode, Gabriel left the door open. At least that's what we believe, right? Gabriel left the door, damn door open. He was worried about Rosita and worried about some some crap, I can't remember. Yeah, am I the only one or the, or when Walking Dead comes back, I like I'm out of sight, out of mind, I forget some of the stuff or a lot of the stuff that happened. I I always forget majority of these people's names and that's bad because I loved The Walking Dead. There was no show that was better than The Walking Dead. Now, you know, The Walking Dead has some competition. Um and it's very hard to watch The Walking Dead because I'm always forgetting these people. I'm always forgetting the storyline. There's so many freaking plot holes and all of that. But anyway, from what I remember, Gabriel left the door open. And so Negan's roaming free. There's no security. There's no, no nobody watching guard on the gate. There's nothing happening for Negan to be remotely afraid. He goes to Judas' room, and I'm like, why is he going to Judas' room with a shovel? Like, what is he about to do? Is he about to kill the little girl? And of course, Judith is not there because she's patrolling the other section of Alexandria, or 
Maybe she sleep in the kitchen. Or I don't know where she went or where she was, but she wasn't in her room. And that was the weirdest thing ever. Like, what is this little girl doing? And he then takes the compass or a compass. Um, and I'm like, you know, Walking Dead always does this thing where they show something that should mean something to me. But ever since Rick Grimes died, well, ever since Glenn died, I've kind of like been absent-minded to these little moments that they have in The Walking Dead because I just don't care anymore. All my favorites are gone. But, you know, I'm holding on strong for the, the final, the last three. But anyways, he takes the compass. He goes, he takes a bite out of the, pro, uh, uh, the, the fruit. Uh, in the in the in the yard in the front yard backyard wherever he is he's just roaming free then we break into the dawn and he has on a new shirt and like a, a sack filled with some stuff and I'm like okay and he has a shovel he throws a shovel overboard he decides to try to hop the fence and here comes Judith so he says how about I go my way and you go yours and she's like nope and she's holding the gun. Now, the gun weighed so much that the little girl couldn't even really, like, the gun was like this and not like this. It was like, I'm like, well, she ain't shooting nobody. He says, when your mom and dad locked me up, they told me I would help people see that things would change. He says, I haven't seen the progression in life. Alexandria is like a winter wonderland, but I haven't seen ish because for six years, I've been locked up and I've only been able to piss and crap in a pot. He says, you know better than anyone um, you know me better than anyone, at least in the last few years you've known me, gotten to know me better than anyone. He says, I promise I won't hurt anyone, even if they try to hurt me. She says, they were, she, and then she says, then she says, were you in my room? And he shows her the compass and she says, keep it. She lets him get away. And I'm like, I'm not really feeling this, Judith. Michonne is gone and the people at the hilltop are worried about the team and so alden ends up getting luke on a two-man team suggested by some native american uh marco character uh i don't know i don't know uh, aladdin looking i don't know what he i don't know who he is but you know they always throw these new people in the mix and we're supposed to care and i'm like okay i don't know who he is but it sounded like his name was marco i don't know if it was my tv or what but i can never hear the names that they're saying and so they're like, oh, go find Michonne and go find the team. And so Luke and Alden set off. Enid kisses Alden before he goes. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Enid then got grown now. She grown up now. Daryl and Michonne have a moment when they're walking back to or trying to get back to the hilltop, all the while looking and surveying their, their area because they have these freaks walking around with these masks. And um, Daryl says, you know, I apologize for not being able to find him. Because Michonne is all like, it's a, it's a good thing that we bring him back so that the people are able to mourn. You know, emphasizing on the fact that they never found Rick's body and it's, it was whisked away in a helicopter taken somewhere. Like, and so he's like, you know, I apologize for not being able to find him. Michonne's like, you did everything that you needed to do. Thank you for that and thank you for after. I'm like, what happened after? Are we ever going to find out? Please don't tell me uh, uh, Daryl and Michonne had some sort of sexual situation happen. I, I want to know what happened after. I, I don't know what she was referencing, but then again, maybe this is a moment that AMC wants me to remember because I'm supposed to still care about The Walking Dead. And uh, they have a lot of, they have a lot. They have a lot to do to get me back on track. All of a sudden, the dog starts barking. Bark, 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 bark. And you know, they tail some or trail some zombies onto a bridge. And there's like six of them or seven of them. And they're walking steadily, walking and stuff. And smart Daryl decides to shoot one of them in the leg. And I'm like, oh, he's trying to see who's gonna start screaming like a biatch. So he shoots one, the zombie keeps walking. He shoots another one, and then you hear, ah! And so the zombies start eating them, eating them. Then three of the, the other uh, fake zombies try to turn around and walk away, and Michonne is there. So, you know, the guy pulls out a knife and tries to attack Michonne. Michonne chops his arm off and then kills them. And then the third one, uh, second one gets shot. And then the third one. So after Michonne kills that one, then Daryl shoots the other one in the head, and then that leaves Lydia to plead for her life. Oh, no, 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 don't kill me. They rip off the mask, shows it to Michonne. See, it's Halloween every year here. And, and, and Daryl's like, let's take her, let's keep her. I'm like, what in the entire hell is going on now? This coming, this coming from the man, this coming from the man that got Rick. I think Rick, okay. Daryl got Glenn killed, 
Daryl got Rick killed, and that's what I feel, and that's how I feel. Daryl got Carl, Daryl got everybody killed. I don't care what anybody say. Daryl is the reason why everybody's dying. So when Daryl gets an attitude and wants to huffy and puffy face all over the place and kill everybody and not care and, and go all Maggie on everybody, kill everybody, it's all good. But now he wants to save bitches. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, is, has he not gotten any? Well, you know, Carol is with Ezekiel and Rosita is in Gabriel after she's getting the doctor. And what happened with her, him and Michelle? I don't know. Well, how's Michelle getting her thing waxed? We don't know. So now he sees this girl and he's like, oh, oh. I don't know. Daryl's hard to figure out. One season he's complex, then he's the opposite. Then he's back and then he's the opposite again. I don't know. But now he wants to bring her in. Negan is sitting in an old van, car, whatever, and he's eating McDonald's. And a zombie comes up, tries to take him out. He loses. He takes the shovel, and I'm trying to use the shovel to kill the zombie, but it's not as bad. And then, I don't know about if it was me or if it was you, if we can adopt similar connections despite our differences, but the food that he had in that knapsack was like nasty food, which it boggled my mind because I'm like, if he left Alexandria with food and then when the stuff hit the floor, it was like, it just looked, looked, looked dirty and trashy. I don't know, but I was just following along with the thing. I didn't look at, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that's always going to look at the after show or look at the articles and stuff to see what happened. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my review as I've just watched. And I don't know, I was, I was, it was, I was weirded out by that. The team ends up bringing um, Jesus back and everybody's all like, who the f is this girl you're bringing here? And then the old, the old drunk wife, the, the drunk wife of the drunk husband from the last, uh, the earlier part of the episode, she's like, oh, y'all, she's the one that the reason why Jesus is dead. Y'all gonna have to wax this, bro. Y'all gonna have to wax her. Don't be putting her in the jail cell. Y'all gonna have to wax her. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Tara's like, I know what we have to do. I know. Then, you know, Negan ends up finding a clothing store. And I'm like, okay. So he's about to go shopping. Okay. And the mix of that, I'm like, maybe he's going to set up shop here or whatever the case may be. He ends up finding um, a leather jacket. And I thought he was going to end up finding another bat. But he ends up finding a leather jacket. And then all of a sudden, these three rabid dogs come out of nowhere. And they're like barking, bark, barking, barking, bark. And then he goes on top of the shelf. He hides out for a little bit. Then the dogs leave. But as he ex tries to exit, the dogs find him again. And they start chasing him down. He gets to the end of the hallway at a door that's blocked. And he goes to force it open. He finds a zombie, throws the zombie in on the dogs, and then the dogs become dog food, literally. And the zombie chews them away. Negan walks away with a, a nice leather jacket. And in my mind, I'm angry because I'm not a fan of evil people being able to win. And I don't care. He's been in prison for six years having to defecate in a bowl. I don't care. Negan should be dead right now. But he's not. So I don't understand why AMC is trying to get us to be concerned and care about this jokester. He should be dead right now. I don't believe anything that he says about not hurting people, even if they try to hurt him. Bullshit. I'm not a fan. Luke and Alden get separated, not separated, they get tricked by Unicle's arrows being nicely placed in trees. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, announced to him two zombies attack and I think this was one of the coolest zombie um, collaborations in a long time or or situations partnerships if you will because there was a, a husband and the wife and the wife was being dragged by the stomach on the floor and like or husband or brother and sister or friend and girl whatever it was weird but Alden comes with a spear and throws it and slams it in the, the zombie's face I'm like okay Alden got some skills Okay, I just couldn't really understand why we were following Unico's nicely placed arrows in trees sporadically out of nowhere around a herd of zombies. That just didn't make any sense to me. I was lost and confused by what was happening. And I thought Alden would be smarter and I thought Luke would be smarter, but they're sitting here worrying about who's going to conduct the fair music. And I'm like, y'all in the wrong line of business. Who y'all searching for? Michonne and Daryl go through this complex issue about what they need to do with this Lydia Broad, who first says that she doesn't have a name and they ne she never had a name. And I'm like, okay, all right, why are we believing this Broad? Then we pass that and then Eugene gets his knee popped back in or his leg popped back in by the doctor dude. 
forgot his name because he's the one that got he's the one that got Carol got Carl killed. Him and Daryl, goddammit. So I forgot his name. Don't really care. Um and you know, we 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 skip a little couple seconds, I look away, and then I turn back and Eugene's confessing his love to fucking Rosita. And I'm like, is Rosita and Gabriel's relationship hidden or was what what was i what is that what eugene was doing because he was like i thought i was gonna die and i i couldn't imagine not being on this earth with you and i'm like what the hell eugene and rosita barf like are you freaking serious and that's exactly what rosita did she barfed but she barfed because her ass is pregnant and gabriel is probably not the father because she slept with the doctor before she slept with gabriel that's what i took from that she said, you know, when we had fun before Gabriel and I got involved, who was she talking about? She wasn't talking about Eugene. I know she ain't sleep with that. I'm just saying, Eugene off here listening to the side and shit, he's crushed. Like his soul is like coming out of his body because he hears that Rosita's pregnant and it's not by his penis. Daryl and Henry have a talk and I really can care less about this. Negan makes it back to the sanctuary and I'm not, I'm just displeased by this whole turn of events. Why do we care that they had hot glue all over the place to symbolize webs? And and then I'm just like, what? Like I heard that bit off the, the uh, after show. And I'm just like, I don't care about this whole process. He lost his place. I don't care if he cried, host on the talking dead. I don't care about any of this stuff. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really not here for this whole moment. He finds furniture, he flips the furniture over, he makes a room, uh, a sectional area for living space or whatever. He breaks into a hidden room that has just ha so happens to have a motorcycle and old can goods with rats pissing on it. And then he finds Big Richie who turned into a zombie. He goes and he goes out and kills the zombies. And I was just hoping that one of them would be the Whisperer, but they weren't. Then he decides to leave the Big Rich dude alive. And then he goes back out, looks at JG, uh, Judith Grimes on the compass and goes back out and decides to kill him and says, I'm sorry, this is not me and kills the zombie or some crap. And I'm just like, I don't care about any of this. Aaron apologized to Michonne before he leaves the hilltop and says that I uh, I am so sorry you were right. Michonne says I know that I was. Alden and uh, freaking Luke are still following these neatly placed arrows in the trees. And of course, they end up getting got by the whispers. We deal with Lydia, who at this point doesn't have a name um, because she says she doesn't have a name. But you know, they're burying Jesus Daryl gets emotional. He goes down the steps and he interrogates, kind of, interrogates Lydia, who at this point doesn't have a name. She's lying out her ass. One point, we're never alone. Next, next thing she says, we're alone. Then she says, I don't have a team. Then she says, my mom is here. Then she says, my mom's by herself at the cemetery. Then she says, uh, she's by herself, but we're never alone. Like, it was all types of shit. Daryl leaves her alive, but I, at first I was pissed, but then I saw what the hell they were doing. I saw it. Henry and Daryl planned it. And Henry made it seem like he was worried about her. Keep her alive! Keep her alive! And Daryl walks out and then Lydia's like, thank you, baby. Thank you. Henry's like, oh, no problem, vagina. I got your back. I'm Henry. What's your name? Lydia's like, I'm Lydia. I really have a name, but I didn't want to tell him because he's crazy. But unbeknownst to her, Daryl was listening to the whole entire thing. I like when Daryl is smart. I do. I like when he is smart. Negan rides on the road and gets shot up by Judith. How is Judith all over the freaking place? And you know what's so crazy to me? Every time I watch this show, it's like one, one moment they're in the town, then the next moment they're, it seems, which would appear to be like miles and miles of way. So I'm lost. I was lost by this whole conversation and this is where I need you guys to help me out because this is what I gathered as I just got finished watching The Walking Dead season nine, episode nine, okay? Did Negan say that he was going back to Alexandria or did he say that he was not going back to Alexandria? I was so lost in this moment because why, why are we trusting him and why is Enid not killing him and not following through with her word? I'm lost. Don't get it. So I, I need y'all to help me out with that. Let me know what you think uh, happened or what was going on. And I'm sure you guys do know. But outside of that, what did y'all think about this episode? 
Did y'all like this episode? This episode was cool. It, it had some good moments, but I feel like there is uh, entirely way too many people to be concerned about, or at least that they're trying to get us to be concerned about when I'm watching every episode of The Walking Dead right now. It's just a lot going on. I, I, I really can't see a season 10 without the, well, I have no choice. But let me know what you guys think about my review. Leave your comments below about the episode. What do you think is happening? Do you think Lydia can be trusted? I don't think she can. Do you think Henry's gonna fall for Lydia? Probably. And like, and what do you think Michonne and Daryl were talking about when she said it even after? Leave all your insights below. Let me know what you think. And do check out AConnectionTV.com and also follow me on ACTV IG and AConnectionTV on IG. Love you guys so much. Deuces.